You're listening to the Packernet Podcast Network. Survivor 46 is here and so is On Fire, the only official Survivor podcast. And we have a twist this season. The winner of Survivor 45, D. Vyadaris, will be joining us every week. We're going behind the scenes of the biggest moments, the how and the why things happen, and the strategy and analysis you can only get from someone like me, a Survivor winner. Listen to On Fire, the official Survivor podcast, wherever you get your podcasts. I'm Alex Rodriguez. And I'm Jason Kelly. From Bloomberg, this is The Deal. Each week, you will hear us in conversation with business icons. This show will explore deal-making across sports, media, and entertainment. That is a harsh lesson in business. Sports is and not uh, as simple you know, I, as bringing a bunch of big names together. I didn't want to do another stomp you out speech. It opened so, up so many more doors. The show is called The, the deal. deal. Listen to The Deal. Listen to The Deal on Spotify. You, you feel this, this nervousness on the phone there? Sir, I've been trying to make an urgent phone call up there. Well, I don't think it's something I want to do on an overseas phone. You got to make some phone calls. Hang up the phone. Prank caller. Prank caller. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Packernet After Dark. This is the call-in show of the Packernet Podcast Network. If you'd like to call in, if you want to participate in the show, feel free to do so. The phone number here is 608-501-0718. Call in and talk about whatever the heck you want to talk about. It doesn't really matter all that much. Uh, New callers go directly to the front of the line, and as far as I can see, we've got uh, two new callers. So why don't you guys go ahead and take it away? Hey, Ryan. This is Daniel from Sweden calling. What's up? Long-time listener, first-time caller. Thank you. Uh, love the show. Uh, I just want to say that I'm super excited about love. And uh, the reason that I am excited is during the Rodgers and Favre era, uh, the default has always been that we're going to win the game. And you're almost rooting for the team not to lose. Yeah. Uh, before every game, you feel anxious and... Uh, and when they win, you feel just relieved. You know, I'll, I'll say, I've been saying this for a while now, and I'm just glad to hear that I'm not the only one, because it, as stupid as it sounds, being as good as we were really did kind of rob me, rob us, I think, of a little bit of the joy that comes along with, you know, winning. <laughs> you know, instead of jubilation of winning, it's just like, oh man, good thing we didn't lose. That would have sucked. You don't feel excited and happy. At least not. Uh, at least not. I'm. I'm. I don't feel happy. I just feel relieved. Right. Uh, but now, when the love era begins, uh, you can finally start rooting for the team to win again, because every game doesn't feel like a, lo- a win before before the game starts. So that's the reason why I am I am excited, and a lot of my Swedish Packer fans uh, feel the same way. And uh, go Packo! Well, that's awesome. I really appreciate the call. That's uh, good of you to reach out. And um, by the way, feel free to call back in. I'd love to know how that works as a Swedish Packer fan. Um, obviously, being in Wisconsin, it's not hard to find Packer fans. You go to the grocery store, and you know somebody's wearing a Packer shirt, you know, it's just, it's just a natural way things go. But how do you even find other Packer fans? And do you have a group of, of people that you hang out with? Or I don't know, I'd just be interested to, to know how that works, the logistics, staying up late, watching stuff and whatnot. But um, I'm with you. I, I, as I said, I've been saying that for some time now. Uh, there was, I recognize this, I think it was even in the Favre era when we were kind of struggling and I remember there was this feeling of, you know, <clears throat> you know, you went into a game expecting to lose. You know, I mean, that's that's clearly a better team than us. I don't think we're going to win the game. Um, but then I remember just being filled with, but what if? What if? And we ended up winning the game, and it was just such an exciting feeling because it's, you, you won the game. <laughs> you weren't supposed to win it, you know? Uh, we did it. It was awesome. And it was just a very different feeling than... Just this anxiety of trying to maintain perfection, 
right? There's just this constant stress of, oh man, I, what if we lose? Wouldn't that be ho-? because you're just always expected to be the best, and everything just has to be perfect all the time, and it's just this constant stress. And I'm sure not every Packer fan does that to themselves, but um, there are certainly some of us. And uh, Daniel from Sweden and myself are at least two of those people that punished ourselves for all these years. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying I want to be a bad team so that I can enjoy our five wins, but it is, it is at least for this year, even if we are a really good team, the expectations are so low and you don't really know what to expect. I think there will be sort of an element of excitement to see the team come together and, and, and actually win football games. All right. Uh, new caller number two. Hey, Ryan, it's Eli, the carpenter from Duluth, Minnesota. Hey, Long time listener and first time caller. Got a predicament here that I'd love your opinion on and okay. uh, figured it warranted a first call. So last season, my uh, three buddies and I did a fantasy league with teams instead of players. So we all drafted a team from each division. And we got points based on their wins and losses over the season. Uh, the winner from the last season, my prize is that my friends have to pay for a tattoo related wow. to one of my teams that I drafted. And I need some help picking which team to go with. So we're all pretty heavily tattooed as okay. is. So it doesn't need to be any kind of sentimental value or significance to this one. So everything's on the table. And uh, just to clarify, it doesn't need to be the team's exact logo, colors, or anything, just something related to the team. So I'll list off my teams here and love to know which one you pick because, honestly, don't have a preference and probably just going to go with whatever you decide here. Oh, so no. So here's my team. Oh, no. Got the Eagles, the Lions, the Falcons, the Rams, the Bills, the Bengals, and the Chiefs. And if you hate all of these options, just keep in mind that my buddy that lost the league had to get a tattoo of his worst performing team. So now he's walking around with a Broncos Let's Ride tattoo. <laughs> so let me know what you think, Ryan. Love your show, man. Go back, go. All right, so I'm, I'm I'm confused. I thought you were the winner, and everybody else had to get a tattoo, but that's not uh, that's not the you have to get a tattoo. I'm guessing. That's what I'm picking is your tat. This is this is the most pressure. I'm not kidding. This isn't even. It's not even close. Probably because I don't even have any, so it feels like a bigger deal than probably what it does to you. But oh, I see. My prize is that my friends have to pay for a tattoo related to one of my teams that I drafted, and I need help picking. Okay. Oh man, you know what? I, I I'll tell you what. I'm going to obfuscate my duties if that's even the right word, because this is something I don't want to pick something. Then you run off and get a tattoo, and then there's a bunch of better ideas. We need callers to call in with ideas. I don't know if you're on a, 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 a time schedule here, Eli, but give it a couple days. We'll get the calls rolling in. But let's let's see what we got here. Um, Eagles, Lions, Falcons, Rams, Bills, Bengals, Chiefs. And you have to get a tattoo of something related to those teams. I'd like to rule out the Lions. Well, let's do this. If we're talking straight up logos, which would be the coolest logo? I'm leaning toward one of the birds. Second thought, let's bring the lions back into the fold. Can you just get a lion tattoo? Would that not be good enough? Because you can get a pretty dope lion tattoo, or an eagle, or a falcon, or whatever. Maybe you can kind of like hide the logo a little bit, but it's still a pretty cool looking, even a bengal, like a bengal tiger or something, you know? I know there are much more creative, you know, like the the let's ride thing is, trying to think of slogans or logos, or I don't know. That's going to be my tentative answer. I don't know the rules. I'd want to get a cool tattoo of a lion, and and if there's some way you have to, you know, incorporate the colors. And if it's just too much because it's the lions, and I understand that, I would get like, you know, you can get a cool looking eagle and just use eagle's colors. And if people ask, just be like, no, nah, dude, it's just uh, it's just an eagle. Don't worry about it. That's my thought. I don't know if any of that's allowed. Terrible suggestion. It's just off the top of my head. Please give it a couple days, and guys, make sure we start getting some calls in here with some really good ideas. Let me list the teams again: Eagles, Lions. Falcons, Rams, Bills, Bengals, Chiefs. Oh, ooh, this is a robot opportunity. Give me one second. All right, here's what the robot's got. He's congratulating me for winning the league because he doesn't understand. Uh, one idea for each team. Eagles. An eagle soaring high above the skyline of Philadelphia with the uh, Liberty Bell in the background. So you could do an eagle with the Liberty Bell. That way you got an eagle and an identifiable part of the city. I think that could work. Old school black and white portrait of a roaring lion with classic cars signifying Detroit's historic automotive industry integrated subtly into the main. Dang. I think that's pretty cool, dude. 
I like that. And it's subtle. Nobody knows it's Detroit Lions, but at the same time, it's just a cool black and white lion with, like, cars in its mane. Uh, Falcons, it says, a stylized geometric falcon soaring above an abstract representation of Atlanta skyline. You're just ripping off your own ideas here, man. Perhaps including a stylized peach held in the falcon's talons. So that could be cool. I don't know about style. I don't even know what that means. Geometric, stylized, whatever. But a falcon with a peach in its talons? Uh, L.A. Rams? (laughs) It doesn't even... Anyways, a strong, majestic ram standing atop a hill with the L.A. skyline, and again with the skyline. Palm trees silhouetted in the background. Eh. Uh, Buffalo Bills says this could be a buffalo charging toward the city's skyline. If you say skyline one more time, what is even buffalo sky? Buffalo doesn't have a skyline. And they're just, you're just putting stylized in front of things to make it sound fancy, but it's, whatever. It's fine. Maybe you could have, I'll just, I'll just butt in here. You could have a buffalo smashing a table. There you go. Bengals. I'm, I'm so worried you're going to say Skyline. I'm going to lose it. A Bengal tiger lounging on the banks of a stylized river. All right. Two words are banned now to represent the Ohio River. The tiger stripes could be creatively shaped to mimic the Cincinnati Skyline. Oh, good Lord. Oh. Well, I think the skyline of a city needs to be incorporated, okay? I don't, again, what is this? I'm sure Cincinnati is a skyline, but no, it's nothing r- recognizable. Kansas City Chiefs. Oh, boy. I already see the word skyline. Is stylized in there? No? Okay. Uh, a proud, abstract Native American chief. Oh, you're going to get in trouble for this one. With feathers in his hair, subtly incorporating elements of Kansas City, like the iconic Western auto sign or a subtle skyline detail. I'm going to just butt in there and say, let's just do something with barbecue. Oh, dude, an Indian chief smashing barbecue. By the way, I'm pretty sure Native Americans invented barbecue. That's what I learned a long time ago on some, one of those TV shows. It was like uh, Baba Kue or some crazy thing or whatever, but that's where the, the barbecue came from. So it still works as much as somebody's going to be offended by it, but you know what? Nobody cares about them anyways. So there you go. There's an idea. Stylized skyline of a, of a buffalo smashing barbecue. You can just mix them all in. <laughs> as long as it's stylized with a barbecue or, or with a uh, skyline somewhere. All right, back up to the top we go with Mr. Green. Hey, Ryan, Mr. Green checking in. What's up? Having my morning coffee and listening to the cast, Good day. and I couldn't agree more once again with your position. The other day, we I forgot what it was we agreed, agreed upon. Okay. But uh, anyways, great minds think alike, I guess. There it is. But seriously, I, I'm wondering if we could start a poll. What are we going to call the game that we love? When you have no kickoffs, when you have no, well, let's see, no onside kicks we're going to eventually get to. There's going to be no kickoffs. You're just automatic touchback after a score, apparently. Um, they'll probably eliminate extra points. What's next? Do they come after the punting game? The, the the name football for this sport is going to be the most ironic name in all of sports. I mean, what do we call football <laughs> if we're not kicking the ball anymore? I mean, I feel like it's a legitimate question. Maybe you can help me out with some insight? Go, Pat, go. Yeah, so I think that is... Uh, a funny thing and maybe maybe i was wrong this whole time maybe it has nothing to do with concussions it's just we need to get all kicking out of the game <laughs> uh makes me feel better about our picking a kicker not because you know picking a kicker is smart in a game with no kicking but because i'm not confident necessarily in his abilities so far we'll see how it goes i don't know man to me that's almost the the, the funny part of this whole story is if we do eliminate all kicking it goes from being a, a name that makes no sense for the sport to begin with to a name that makes really no sense anymore but yeah good observation and i don't know the name feel free to call in with a name suggestion should i ask the robot we might as well this will be robot day says uh if uh kicking is removed from american football you probably want a name that reflects the sports emphasis on passing and running so you could call it pass ball gridiron rush ball end zone touchdown tackle ball well you, you had it for a second there gridiron's cool you gonna watch some gridiron yeah man if you just start doing that anyways what you doing? Just watching a little gridiron. What are you doing? Boys back in the day really missed an opportunity with that one. Hey, Papa Mackey. Hey. The NFL and all these freaking gosh darn mother freaking rule changes yep. every year since like 2010. We get a new rule change. I can't handle it anymore. It is I can't exhausting. keep up with the 
blocking low, the blocking towards your end zone. Like, all we used to have to worry about were cut blocks or chop blocks. Is what you high, low alignment. That was it. Now you can't freaking block. If you kick returns, I, they move the extra point, which wasn't. Losing you. I mean, why don't we just get to the point where if a team on fourth down just says, okay, give it to the other team and put it on the 25. Let's just hand the fourth down, you hike the ball, you give it to the damn ref, and he walks it down to the 25-yard line in a fucking mark band ceremony, and he can place it there, he can wear regalia, and Rodgers can come out with his f***ing in the hands. And we have the ball on the 25-yard line, and we can eliminate a third of the game. <sighs> I appreciate your effort to, you know, throw down some mother frickins and whatnot, but I understand the frustration got the best of you. Roger Goodell sucks. He sucks so bad. <sighs> I miss Paul Taylor and his goofy look with them glasses. He looked like a gay darn middle school principal. But he ran the league well. All right, guys. Here's my one goal for the day, Rico. Love you. Yeah, love you too, I guess. It's kind of weird. Let's not make that a thing. But yeah, I mean, it, it really does feel like they're just trying to inch us toward what they ultimately want. And it's like, you know what, why don't you just go ahead and do what you want so we can see how much you suck and then get you out of your spot? Because that is what they want. They would much rather have it where you just start at the 25-yard line. Let's just start at the 25. It'll be even, it'll be fair, right? And, 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 and here's the other thing. An- another sort of uh, conspiracy in which we're not really interested in... Um, the concussions, it has nothing to do with that. The point is, they don't want teams starting at the five. Why? It's it's terrible for offenses. When, when a team is backed up inside of their own five-yard line, how often do they even get out of there? If a team starts at the 25, what are the odds they're going to get a, a touchdown as opposed to starting at the five? I, I don't know what it is, but I know it goes through the roof. So for every reason on planet Earth, probably more so the offensive production than anything else, they absolutely want that. Football fans don't want it. They love when when you've got, you know, I mean, good special teams is a part of the game, and it's something to be respected and admired. And if you can pin a team inside their own 10-yard line consistently and give your defense a rest and, and, you know, help your defense and get your offense back out there because they're not getting pinned out of that area and you're playing the whole field position game, it's a part of the game. It's not anymore. And then, then, then teams will start doing it with punting, and they'll have to figure out a way to get out of that. By pretending that we just care about, oh, you know, the concussions. We just have to be careful with the concussion. No, you just don't want people getting pinned inside the 10-yard line. So you're right. We should just have, like, if you don't want to play anymore, fourth down, all right. Well, you want to give it to the other team? Sure. Hand it to the ref. The ref will run it down to the 25, and the tw- the other team's offense can come out. And that's going to mean less punting because, I mean, it, it's got to go into the calculus. If we can punt it and have you pinned, as opposed to, I know that if we forfeit, we you start at the 25, forget it, we'll just go for it. Might as well. Which is what they want. Go for it on fourth down. It's perfect. From a league that only cares about score as many points as you can because we need as much money as we can. From all the views and the fantasy football and all the fantasy this and that and the other and just more, 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 more. It's like getting pancakes and putting syrup on it and then putting whipped cream on that and then dumping sugar on top of that and then putting like chocolate on top of that. It's like, come on, man. Can we just enjoy a good pancake, you know? A little bit of butter, a little bit of maple syrup. Let's not get... No! Just putting crap on top of it. Over, Put a Twinkie on top of that. This, I mean, it's, it's, it's going the exact same way as the Fast and Furious franchise. It's just getting more and more ridiculous. More points, more points, more. We just need more points. Oh, is that freaking defense? Did they stop him again? That punter, I swear, he's always doing that. Stop. They should, they should just, t- like, just be freaking honest and tell us what you really want. Of course they won't. I'm sorry, Rico, but I'm emotional. I had another thought. All this rule change is going to do is going to bring back cop and corner and angle punts. That's all it's going to do. We're going to see punts aimed out of bounds now within the five-yard line. It's out. Thanks, NFL. Yeah, that's... That's why I said they're they're just they're gonna have to attack punts next, and they're gonna pretend that it has to do with the concussions, and it doesn't. It has to do with your stymieing our offenses. So, I mean, if if you were 
in, an intelligent GM, you would focus all of your efforts on offense. So I guess that's my biggest knock on, on Brian Gutekunst right now is that he's entirely too focused on defense because the league doesn't care and special teams, right? The league is going to give handicaps to offenses over and over and over and over and over to the point where the strongest offense wins. I'm not saying that's where we're at right now, but I mean, that's what they want and that's what they keep pushing. So I don't know, man. Hey, Ryan, it's Seth. Hi. Um, two, two things quick this morning. Uh, first, uh, Joe, the janitor, didn't, uh, didn't mean to offend you, my man. <laughs> uh, you were, uh, just an example of how funny it would be if somebody was calling in on behalf of everyone else and the whole skibidi mask thing. So keep, keep it going. I love your calls, Joe. Um, Ryan, I'm listening to your, uh, to your podcast on, whole new uh, kickoff rule and I'm loving your rant making my morning so keep it up hopefully it keeps going while I pause in the middle of it to make this call um, but I just also want to make a point of one I agree that I don't see people getting hurt on kickoffs near as much as they say um, actually the people that seem to get hurt the most concussion wise um, is often like running backs quarterbacks so are we going to take away running backs no more running backs no more quarterbacks no tackling you know, unless someone's turned up field, like where where are we going to draw the line? But also, I think everyone forgets um, this is how these people have chosen to make a living, and a lot of them, you know, would have been making a lot, lot, lot less had they not been in the NFL. So if we were to get rid of all the special teams, that would eliminate a lot of these players' jobs. And uh, do you think those players are willing to risk a concussion or two to provide? Um, for their entire family tree, right. um, or at least their entire family for their whole life to maybe play five to eight years in the NFL and make a few million bucks. Um, I would if I was good enough, but I'm not. Um, the other thing I think is funny about this is like there's all this UFC stuff where people are just kicking each other's brains out. Right. There's all this stuff where us, uh, if you've seen these stupid slap contest things, but yeah. I've seen these videos and. Uh, that's I think that's Dana White. He's he's expanding into that. That's uh, I mean he's he's really excited about. It. I've seen a couple interviews and he's like, that's going to take off. It's going to be massive. The slap fighting thing. And yeah, that's nothing more than just giving each other concussions. That's really all it is. They slap each other's brains out, yeah. and uh, one of them went into the like the uh, I forget what it's called, but what happened to Tua, where your fingers kind of curl up oh, after yeah. you get hit. So I'm just like. And I'm like, I don't understand why the NFL is getting so much scrutiny on kickoffs, especially when I don't see injuries that much either. And these people are making a living, and a lot of players are only in the NFL because they can play special teams well. And so, anyways, I'm going to just keep ranting down the same path, but I think people forget about that too. It's not just some game we're choosing to watch. It's their living, and they choose to do it right. and want to do it, and they make a lot of money to do it. Um, so... Anyways, I'm heading back to listen to the rest of the podcast. Talk to you later. Yeah, and, and as I said, the NFL is not getting a lot of scrutiny. The scrutiny that the NFL got was because they hid information from people, and then they didn't take good proper they, they didn't provide good medical attention to the players that were there. The reason the UFC and boxing and all these things exist, and Dana White is expanding into a concussion sport, is because it, it's it's not about scrutiny. NFL fans will support the NFL as players continue to get hurt. Players will continue to play despite players getting hurt. All that is required of the NFL is to be upfront and honest about the dangers of playing in the NFL, which they should know since they've been playing probably their entire lives. They fully are aware of the dangers that come along with playing football. And then to provide medical care to the best of your abilities. That's it. If you do that, there are no more lawsuits. There is no more scrutiny. You're fine. You've covered yourself, and you're going to have plenty of players and everything else. They have chosen to do this. They've decided to do this. They've gone, as I said, from one extreme to the next, from one extreme of hiding the long-term effects and then not providing proper proper medical attention to players 
to this other extreme of we must remove all concussions and and hiding behind this like we're we're so traumatized from what happened and we've learned and we need to to grieve and we need to constantly show how much we care and player safety and all that. And, and it just, it's a spiral that will not stop. It's unnecessary. They're not going to get in. And, and of course they're going to get some scrutiny from some people, especially since it's become such a big thing. People have wrapped their entire identities around, well, we have to do what's best for the players. No, we, we, we don't. If, if, if what we have to do is, is always protect the players, then we need to shut down the NFL. Now, again, that's assuming that they're, they're, physical health is more important than their financial health. If it's better for them to be healthy and go work at a car lot, then we should shut down the NFL and the UFC and any other sport, you know, hockey, any wrestling, any kind of physical contact sport whatsoever should be shut down. The only thing we're left with is is golf and tennis and pff, baseball probably be okay, but you know, there's probably a couple injuries out there. Basketball, they're all mostly faking it, but there's a couple injuries there. I think if a person flops, they should be removed from the NFL just because, hey, you got injured. We got to protect you. It's what's most important. That's how you fix that problem in that sport. But again, it, it just takes people to be strong enough to say, yes, I understand people are going to get hurt. And yes, I'm okay with that. But nobody is. Everybody's too scared to say it. And so this isn't going to stop. <gasps> You're okay. You're a my, That's horrible. That's terrible. How could you say? Then don't watch. Then shut it down. But don't play this stupid game where we're going to keep doing it and pretend that we just can't can't even stomach it. You're a hypocrite, and you're an idiot, and you're ruining the sport. We'll take a break. We'll be right back. Hey, U.S. Cellular customers, I've got good news, so don't hit skip forward just yet. I'm talking about their special customer event, Us Days. What's Us Days? It means exclusive offers just for their customers, just to say thanks, like up to $1,200 to upgrade to any new phone. No, I didn't just misread that. That's up to $1,200 off. They must really like you. Us Days at U.S. Cellular, exclusive offers just for you, just to say thanks. Right now, U.S. Cellular customers get up to $1,200 to upgrade to any new phone. Terms apply. I'm Alex Rodriguez. And I'm Jason Kelly. From Bloomberg, this is The Deal. Each week, you will hear us in conversation with business icons. This show will explore deal-making across sports, media, and entertainment. And that is a harsh lesson in business. Sports is and not uh, as simple you know, I, as bringing a bunch of big names together. I didn't want to do another stomp you out speech. It opened so, up so many more know, doors. The show is called The, the deal. deal. Listen to The Deal. Listen to The Deal on Spotify. Hey, it's Kaylee Cuoco for Priceline. Ready to go to your happy place for a happy price? Well, why didn't you say so? Just download the Priceline app right now and save up to 60% on hotels. So whether it's Cousin Kevin's Kazoo concert in Kansas City, go Kevin! Or Becky's Bachelorette Bash in Bermuda. You never have to miss a trip ever again. So download the Priceline app today. Your savings are waiting. Go to your happy place for a happy price. Go to your happy price. Priceline. It's only a kick. A jump. A block. It's only a serve. It's only a tackle. A run. It's only for the fans. After all, it's only pressure. You got this. Adidas. Ray Ryan. Kyle from Madison. Hey. Listen to the pod from, I think it's from yesterday, and the conversation is, is the Rodgers era a failure? Um, and I, I do think that's an interesting question, and just totally, like, I don't want to say objectively speaking, because I can't be objective, but despite recent narratives from both sides, I do think something that we should consider when when thinking about this is... Well, I mean, it feels like the goalposts have moved. You know, I remember growing up, and I think I'm just a little bit older than you, but I remember when the standard was, can you get a can you get a ring? You know, if you're a quarterback, it was the guys that got a ring, the guys that didn't get a ring. Uh, you know, because for a lot of years, watching, you know, Elway trying to chase that ring. Now, it was at the expense of the Packers. Never forget, never forget the Broncos cheated the salary cap to win that Super Bowl, all right, asterisk. But, like, Marino, he never got one, you know. But that used to be the standard, and I think Brady just totally, just, he broke 
the expectation game there, right? So I do think keep that in mind in that conversation. But also, I often think if Rodgers, let's say instead of getting his ring during the ascendancy of his young career, what if he won a ring in 2020 or 2021 instead? You know, how, how do we view his legacy in that case? I would argue we would view it more positively, whereas I think if we went back in time and, to- and somehow knew the future back in, in 2010, like on the heels of that victory, that Super Bowl victory, if you knew that we would never get there again, it would certainly, it would be unbelievable and it would be disappointing, you know? So I think you gotta, you gotta look at it in those, under that lens too. All right. Talk to you later. Yeah, I think, um, it's kind of interesting. Well, first of all, maybe it's just too broad of a question because I think we all have a lot of general agreement. But when you ask a broad question like that, a lot gets put under the umbrella and it depends. So if you kind of break it down into certain subcategories, we probably agree a lot more. So you, you just need to be more specific, you know, I, I guess, in, in that regard. And that's why there's going to be so many so much disagreement. And how I answer it is going to be different than... So, so I might answer it one way and say, no, I don't think it was a disappointment. And then you say, well, I think it was because of this. And it's like, well, I agree with that. I just, I just, my criteria for it was, was different. Um, with that being said, I think you're right. And I think it's kind of interesting because if he had won in 2020, he'd have two Super Bowls. And I think that would be a reasonable, of course, some would say that that's not reasonable, but it would be reasonable. But here's the funny part. By 2016, 2017, 2018, 2019, we were talking about Roger's career has been wasted. As in, it's already wasted. So winning in 2020 shouldn't have fixed that, but it would have. And I, I think what that illustrates is people had too high of expectations and people said too many wild and ridiculous things. I think to have as many wins and to have as much success and to go to the playoffs as many times as they did and to cap it off with two Super Bowls would have been perfectly acceptable. Now, do I think one is maybe less than it should have been? Yes. Not by much. As I said, I think over 30 years, two Hall of Fame quarterbacks, I'm, I'm, I'm probably misremembering at this point, but I think it was roughly around three Super Bowls would be the expectation. I know people would just, oh, how dare you, but I, I, whatever. Run your own test and you go see. The way I choose to, chose to do it, that's how it came out. And yes, I did remove Brady from the equation because that was ridiculous. At least I think I did. But then if you, if you again, if you look at it from that standpoint and say he had a wasted career but he was, what, like a game, two games away from it not being wasted and being fulfilled to its almost max potential, I think we're still seeing that as, we need to see that as being kind of ridiculous to say that it was completely wasted. There was some unfulfilled potential, no doubt. But I I, I tend to look at it as, have I enjoyed the last 30 years of my life, the last 15 years of my life? Yes, very much so. It had disappointing ends, but... I mean, get over it, because that's what happens to 31 teams every year. It ends in disappointment. That's football. Doesn't mean you can't enjoy Sundays. So, But again, depending on how certain people want to answer it, what criteria they use, it kind of changes maybe how that gets answered. Hey, Ryan and Seth again. Sorry, I called back close to each other, and hopefully you play this, but uh, it's your fault. You're lucky Kyle snuck in there, or you would have been skipped. I'm just kidding. Because you ran so good on this NFL kickoff rule, <laughs> and I keep wanting to respond to it. So you either got to let me call back to back on this one, or you need to invite me on to your show to rate yeah, with you for a little right. bit. Um, anyway, you were talking about how a lot of kicker kick returners won't return it because they can't return it as well as like Keyshawn can or whatever. And I just am thinking this is going to backfire so bad on the NFL, and it's going to create – huge competitive advantages and disadvantages for different teams. And my reasoning and thoughts for that are you're going to have some teams that say we're never going to, you know, we're never going to return it. Um, and so they're going to quit investing in people and and uh, quit investing in special teams altogether. So not only will their return team suck, but their uh, kickoff team will suck. So then if you do have a team like the Packers of Keyshawn Nixon, we could really focus on it and maybe destroy some other teams, the special teams that uh, kind of quit. quit and that one guy said, but you're going to have teams squibbing it, doing all this crazy crap. Um, and so you're going to, it's going to be like 
it's just going to be a hot mess because you're going to have some teams that invest more in it than they do today, some teams that invest less in it, and it's going to make the game instead of less of the game on accident, potentially. Um, or it'll just suck and everyone will fair catch it, I don't know. But um, I don't know, that just kind of popped into my head of like, it's going to be Question for you, though. Do you know if they do, like, squib or something, can I fair catch a squib with this new dumb rule? Um, can I, uh, what if it's, um, I don't know. Like, where's the line? Can I fair catch it as soon as he kicks the ball throughout the tee, fair catch? Uh, no matter where the ball goes, what happens. Um, so, you know, does that get rid of onside kicks then? I, I don't know. I have two. I thought you left. Anyways, um, that is a, an interesting question because you fair catch the ball when it's in the air and before it contacts ye, the ground, I guess you are the ground. Um, if you're just constantly waving your arm, there's a good chance that as soon as he kicks it, there's a point at which the ball is in the air and not on the ground, right? I mean, it's not like it's an onside kick where it hits the ground almost immediately, and even then you could probably, I guess, f- see, but that's the thing. Like, can you fair catch? Just wave your arm around like crazy. Like, dude, I was waving my arm when the ball was in the air. Um, yeah, I don't know if you could do that. The, the thing that I was thinking as you were saying this is they're going to adopt it where you can take a knee anywhere outside of the, the end zone, and that will represent a touchback. So even if they squib it, you catch it, you take a knee, and you won't be down there, you'll be down at the 25. They'll do something stupid like that, but... Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, it, the the problem with the one thought of, well, if the, what what they're trying to do is by putting it at the 25, you're kind of narrowing down the difference between a good special teams unit and a bad special teams unit. They're making them pretty much even because even if Keyshawn averages to the 30 yard line or 30 yard return or whatever, um, what's the difference? It's not like a, a guy with a 15 yard and a third. It's 25. 25 is now the, the floor that they're setting. So if they're able to successfully do that and there's no ways around it because they've nipped all those in the bud, then um, the problem with investing in it so that we could be the only team with a good special teams is that it's useless. Having the one good kick returner doesn't really do you as, as much good. You'd be better off not investing in it. Go find a linebacker that plays linebacker and has no special teams ability and just fair catch and get it at the 25. If you do have these ways around it with squib kicks and everything else, then I think most teams just continue to invest in their special teams, maybe even more so, because it becomes much more difficult and complicated and everything else. I don't know. But yeah, they're, they're, I mean, and, and that's the thing. You got to rethink everything. You, you know, are you going to do You probably should do a squib kick. It's just going to take a lot of practice because, you know, you want to try to get it down as far as you can, but make sure it touches the ground and then get your guys down there and tackle them. So, I mean, it's, it, you got to have guys just completely redo what it means to do special teams now. And this is where innovation is really going to take off, as opposed to the guys that just know what to do because they've been doing the same thing for a long time. You know, it's it's who can kind of innovate and take it to that next level. Hey, Ryan. Kyle from Madison again. Hey. One other thing I want to touch on, because uh, we're talking about the, the draft being awarded to Green Bay. Awesome. Um, one thing I wanted to bring up, too, uh, that other people haven't mentioned yet, but one of my favorite things when I go to games as a spectator is actually before the game or during is when you see an out of towner who is coming to Green Bay um, from wherever, and like they think they can, they think they know how to drink, they think <laughs> they know how to tailgate, yeah. and then they hit like lot B or whatever at 9 a.m. on a new kickoff or 8 a.m. on a new kickoff. And they start trying to go drink for drink with the pros. I mean, we're talking the professional degenerates, and I mean that in the best possible way. Yep. Like, there is no other place in the universe that can hang drink for drink right. with that crew in Green Bay. And there is inevitably always somebody in an opposing jersey that has just forgot you know, to, to mix in the water a little bit <laughs> before kickoff. And there's always, like, somebody, you know, something helping their Raiders friend, like, walk to the car because they just didn't even make it to kickoff because yeah. they're, 
they're, they were uh, indulging a little bit too much in our hospitality and thinking that they could hang with the Wisconsin crowd. And no, you cannot. You cannot. And so I'm looking forward to that as well once people get here from other places that have never been here. And, you know, the, the old fashions start flowing and the, and the Bloody Marys start flowing. You know they're going to be at the drafts at 7 or 8 o'clock. You know, you know, 8, 9 a.m., those bloodies are getting going. The old fashions are going. Um, I'm looking forward to that as well. That's going to be an amazing scene as some of these opposing fans realize, like, oh, you know, like, this, this is a different experience from a tailgating standpoint. Um, that's going to be a lot of fun as well. So I just wanted to bring that up. Talk to you later. Yeah, a lot of people are going to realize that that's not just a uh... – a cute little thing that people say, like, oh, Wisconsin people can drink or whatever. You're going to find out how very real that is. Um, just a, a, a few, I guess, anecdotes. I, I remember, I probably mentioned this before, but I, I know, I think it was, it might have even been Blaine, but th- th- I have heard of people going down to places like in Florida or whatever where they have drinking competitions, and Wisconsin people are not allowed to participate. They're just not allowed. Um, I heard another story of a, of a group of people going out to Denver and uh, grabbing a couple beers with, I, th- I think it was like probably 10 o'clock or something. They got like a, a burger and they wanted a beer with it. And they got such dirty looks from people out in Denver. Um, you don't understand, like Wisconsin is, you know, alcohol is one of those things that, that can your tolerance can build up. And the more you do it, the more your tolerance builds up. And so, um, I mean, there, there are people who are like professional drinkers, man. This is what they, it's, it's, it's not just, oh, man, it's the weekend. Let's crack a beer and, and, and make some brats. No, it's like that's every day. You come home and you crack a couple beers because you came home or you, you make you make yourself a drink or whatever. Um, <clears throat> a lot of the people at these tailgates, drinking is, is a regular daily activity, and that's why there's, you know, it's where the, the, the most, the, the, they call it the drunkest cities or whatever, um, it's the, the, of the top 10, like nine of them are Wisconsin and there, a lot of them are in that green Bay area. I, and I remember, and this is, this is Wisconsin versus Wisconsin, but I remember we, we had a, uh, a whitewater, it was actually me and my buddy James that did it mostly, but we went on a tour of different, uh, places in Wisconsin just to, to, to drink with them and see if they could hang with us. And every single one of them had a big mouth and we put every single one of them under the table. Because there's a, just a big difference. And, and, and this is the thing. I went to Whitewater. And I've, I've mentioned this before, too. Madison is known as like a big drinking college. It's not a big drinking college because it's a, it's a college where people actually care about their grades. So they'll drink on Thirsty Thursday. They'll have big parties on, on the weekend or something. But Whitewater was every single day. I'm not, it was every single day of my existence in Whitewater I drank alcohol. And a lot of it. So the, the difference between somebody who puts in that amount of work and somebody that doesn't is night and day. And so again, I'd start off the day on some of these tours going shot for shot with Everclear. And at 10 o'clock, this person is passed out snoring. And I'm like, all right, what are we doing next? So I'm not saying everybody in Wisconsin's like that, but that is going to be the gap that some of these people are going to experience when they come here. People that maybe have like a beer or two once in a while, and you come up here and it's seven o'clock in the morning and you're getting cups of beer. You're not going to make it till noon. So, and that might be a word of caution for if you try to do what the people here do, you're going to miss the whole draft. So, just go at your own pace. You know, mix in some waters, grab an apple juice or something. You know, if you're just hanging with a group of people from Wisconsin, who I promise you, first thing in the morning, they're going to grab a couple thirty packs out of the out of the trunk, and it's going to be loaded with beer, and they're just going to start drinking, and they're going to drink, and they're going to drink, and they're going to drink, and when one's empty, you grab another one. Don't do what they do if that's not what you do. Because you're going to miss the whole thing. But yeah, it's going to be an eye-opening experience for some people who maybe didn't realize the full extent of <laughs> of that rumor about Wisconsin people and drinking. Hey, Ryan. Hey. JJ. Podcaster. Hello. <laughs> Podcaster. Listen, I got a new topic that I don't think we've covered on here. All right. And if we have, then just end my call as soon as I say the thing. Next we have... No, I'm just kidding. So we don't have to waste time, but... I feel like we haven't done candy bars. Ooh, all right. I like that. Uh, I'm hungry. One thing that kind of surprises me, when I look up, like, what are all of the popular candy bars, there's not as many as I kind of think. feels like there's just, like, a ton, and then you look it up, it's, like, I don't know, like, 15? <laughs> um, which one did you like? 
I want to let's see see what popular ones are out there. I I'm digging to Kit Kat mm-hmm. and Twix. Uh, my two. When, when you Google, you know, candy bars. That's what I'm doing. They always lump M and M's in there, and I just—it's not a candy bar. That's weird. Candy, man. but it's not a candy bar. So I, I don't think that they count. But if they did, I love M and M's. Then you, you got your uh, Almond Joy versus Mounds, and I'm kind of more of a Almond Joy guy. Yeah. I do like the almonds. I don't. Nestle Crunch, pretty good. So those are some of my top ones. What are yours? So Almond Joys are amazing. I love those, but I would prefer the Mounds just because the Almond doesn't really do it for me. Although, as I'm, you know, getting older, that's the thing. There's like, what would I like now, which I don't really eat very many candy bars, um, as opposed to when I was a kid. So when I was a kid, um, Three Musketeers were my favorite, which I know is the opposite. Like, everybody wants all the stuff in it. I thought it was better with just like the chocolate and the nougat. It was my favorite thing ever. Um... I also like Rolos, but I know those aren't a candy, but I'm trying to think what else I liked when I was a kid. But anyways, um, so Almond Joys are amazing. That's number 20 on this list. Butterfinger's actually really good. I haven't had a Butterfinger in such a long time. Never was my favorite. Probably still wouldn't be, but just a, a really solid thing. Heath, no. Um, Hershey's just straight up is actually kind of kind of solid. And technically it is a bar. And the cookies and cream are also fantastic. Crunch bars or Nestle Crunch are good. Um, paydays, paydays, dude, that's number 15 on this list. That's probably pretty high for me. I love that. That's basically just caramel and salted peanuts. Um, Oreo chocolate candy bar. What are you talking about? Never had that. Hershey's milk chocolate bar again. Fantastic. hundred grand is good. Um, Andy's chocolate mints, dude. Those are really, really good. I'll probably take a pay. Like I, I like an Andy's mint, but it's also not like a thing where, if that was like a full-on bar, I'd want to eat the whole thing. It's good in this little poppable size. Maybe you have two or three of them or something, but I don't know about anything more than that. Three Musketeers, again, I really liked. Probably not my favorite so much anymore. Uh, some of the... Oh, Car- Carmelo's. Always been one of my favorites. Probably still needs to be way near the top. However, again, with the whole getting old thing, super sweet, super rich. You know, back in the day, the sweeter, the richer, the better. Now, a Carmelo is delicious, but, you know, give me like a piece of a Carmelo or something. I'm sounding like such a wuss. It's kind of embarrassing, but it is what it is. Uh, I'd probably still take a payday over a Carmelo. Although, if we're just talking one bite, give me the one bite of a Carmelo. But I, I, I think payday stays at the top. Twix is fine. Milky Way is probably like my new... That, that might be my favorite. I do love a good Milky Way. Snickers is not as good because the nuts just don't do it for me. I don't need all that crunch and everything else. Um, Milky Way is... For a long time, that's been, like, my favorite, right? So really, really young, it was Three Musketeers, and then it became Milky Way. Uh, Reese's are super good, too, though, man. I mean, I don't know if a, if a cup is constitutes of a bar, but, dude, Reese's cups are amazing. And Kit Kats are fine. So between Reese's, Milky Way, and Payday are probably up there. Um, Man, Reese's are so good. I don't know. I don't know. We'll just call that the trio for me, I guess, with a lot of just other fantastic options. I guess we could maybe eliminate... Let's just say Reese's Cup is not a bar, so it doesn't count. I, I might just say payday. I would love... That's, that's just kind of what I'm hankering right now. Good salty peanuts. It's weird because I disqualify Snickers because of the peanuts, but they're just... I don't know. Payday just does it better. Anyways, I think I'm going to nip it right there, and uh, we'll come back. Please get your calls in. Make sure you respond to those very important questions of the day. But you guys have a good rest of your day. I will talk to you later. Bye-bye.